comes to investing, something you might want to think about is because as a self-employed person, you don't have a workplace pension mm. and or you don't have a pension and therefore you can invest in what's known as a SIP, so a self-invested personal pension. Mm -hmm. And it's the same as investing in like a stocks and shares ISA, it's just that you're putting that money away for your pension, for your future, right. and you have a larger allowance for that. So you can put up to 60k a year into that SIP, mm -hmm. completely tax free. And that's something really interesting to think about as a self-employed person is your kind of future you. Because whilst you're saying, obviously putting money away now mm -hmm. might need it, yeah, but don't forget that future Safi in retirement wants to live the same life probably mm -hmm. you're living now, if not more. <laughs> and therefore you want to think about how you're planning for that as well. Yeah. Um, and I do understand like the acronyms, like I've been using them myself by accident and the kind of education around it can feel very like masculine and quite yeah. dramatic because we talk about volatile markets and ETFs, but actually it's becoming easier more now than ever for more people to invest using ISAs and hopefully it will be less daunting in the future. So what is the state pension then? Oh, so the state pension is, it's not a lot of money. It's like 221 pounds a week or 221 pound 20 a week. And like I said, you have to have contributed 35 full years of national insurance to get that state pension. And also when you get it, it doesn't matter if you've done 35 years, 55 years, it's still 221 pound 20. Right. It's also not rising with inflation as much as we'd like to think it was. There's something called the triple lock agreement, which means that the state pension should rise by the highest of 2.5% inflation and average earnings. But as we saw in the last few years, the government can freeze that. And it means that the that it's not rising by inflation. So, you know, with your current living expenses, like would you be able to survive on the state pension? And for most people, the answer is no, because it works out around 11 grand a year, mm. which is not enough to cover even things like rent. Mm, literally, yeah. <laughs> so you want to think about not only how are you building your wealth for the next few years of your life, but retirement sappy that wants to carry on living the same life. How are, the, how are you planning for that? And can you be investing for that or thinking about a SIP? So if I was employed, mm. you said that I have to contribute 35 years. Is that extra money that my employer would put in? No, so the 35 years refers to your state pension. Yeah. You have to pay national insurance tax mm -hmm. for 35 years to be eligible for the full state pension. Right. Different to that is your okay. workplace pension. Your workplace pension is set up by your employer. Mm -hmm. And currently they put in a minimum of 3%, you put in 5%. Mm -hmm. And some employers can match more that goes on but it's an, something called auto enrollment where you're automatically opted into that mm -hmm. and you have to opt out and that's what's happening separately to the 35 years right okay that does that makes sense, sense? Yeah, yeah yeah that makes sense